Hello, Barristers. We hope you had a great week. I'm Kevin, and we're back with some important information on our return to campus. And I'm Danielle. Welcome to this week's episode of Campus News. So are you guys ready to get back on, either online or on campus? Because some of our incoming students have never even set foot on Barrister territory, we are excited to show you the beautiful campus that you'll be arriving to, whether it's later this week or later this year. Here is Dr. Garcia with a tour of our newly improved campus and what you should expect once you get there. Hello everybody, so I'm Dr. Garcia, and for all the new students, I am your principal. You only see a part of my face, but you'll see the rest of me in August. And we are in the plant manager's office, and this is Mr. Ramirez. And he is our plant manager, and he is going to show us how his crew uses a new device. Keeping classrooms safe will be a breeze with Mr. Ramirez's crew using a new CDC-approved chemical. It's safe for school use and only takes 10 minutes to reach maximum effectiveness. This is some of the filters they installed on all their air conditioning. These new CDC approved M13 filters are installed every month and ensure safer and cleaner classrooms. Dr. Garcia encourages students to be vigilant in protecting themselves and others through the practice of double masking. A cloth mask over the traditional surgical mask is recommended as demonstrated. Walking through the main building and to the iconic 400s building will be socially distanced by having students follow AeroScience, establishing a set side of the hallway for students to walk. Walking this direction, you can see the AeroScience on the walls. We want you to walk this direction, and if you see the arrow on the other side, people walking this direction. Okay, so this is the view of the foyer um, from the inside of the building. And when you walk in the building and you make a left, the main office is right to my left. In the center of campus lie the quad and the mound, where students would normally be able to socialize through events like, say, Hey Day. So, uh, senior, sorry not to depress you here by showing you the senior quad or the senior court, uh, but some of you who come back in May may want to uh, use it, but um, those of us who miss our campus, I just wanted to show it to you anyway. This is our senior area. Benches throughout the quad and senior courts are spray painted so students can visually see the new social distancing guidelines. The basketball and volleyball courts will be open for students to play with their friends or practice with their teams. The cafeteria will remain largely the same, with an exception for lines, as they will be distanced to every third line being open. For students who haven't seen it, Marshall's longest ramp connects the north and south parts of campus. For the return to school, there will also be arrows that will keep students socially distanced as they walk to their class. All right, so for all of our returning students and our, uh, who, are, who missed the campus and our new students coming in, this is what we call the ramp. And it goes from the main campus across what we call the driveway, but I'm 
naming this Marshall Way. This is Marshall Way. In the old days, it used to be a real street, but today it brings together the many different parts of campus. The district has approved a new plan for Marshall, which ensures accessibility and involves building a new elevator in the 500s, coupled with new ramps in the 600s. Marshall's field is open for athletic teams to practice and usually holds events such as the yearly pep rally and freshman orientation. All right, students, so we have behind me our beautiful uh, football field and soccer field for both uh, girls and boys. And hopefully we will have some soccer and football games this semester. We might have to live stream it. We're not really sure how this is gonna work out. And then right over here, we can see the stands on our side. And uh, seniors, I hope, right now it's too early to tell, but there is a small possibility that we can have graduation out here this year. The Marshall campus is unique, and there are countless of other beautiful parts that haven't been shown, but hopefully some of you will get to experience the environment as the school opens for students to return. Thank you, Dr. Garcia, for the tour of our wonderful campus. So, Danielle, I think the school is waiting for a deposit. What? I never knew we had to make a deposit. Yeah, I'm just kidding. What you do need to have, though, when you get on campus, is an LUSD daily pass. Right. Speaking of the daily pass, here's Oliver Plath with Nurse Tang discussing some important health and safety procedures for students returning to campus. So I heard you have some information about returning to school. Would you mind sharing with us? Uh, first of all, um, just it's exciting to come back to school for those who are choosing to come back hybrid physically. So we, we need to go back to the basics. You guys remember this. Um, it's really important to do your hand hygiene. Make sure you wash your hands with soap and water when it's available for 20 seconds at least. Make sure you rub all different sides and surfaces, especially your fingertips, um, especially if you touch high touch items, objects, doorknobs, light switches, things like that. Um, you know, when you don't have soap and water, you want to use the hand sanitizer when you can. And uh, the school is supplying 60% alcohol-based sanitizer. We want to wear masks, too. Uh, make sure your masks are fit well. You know, masks do two things, right? Think of it as a two-way street. You want to protect yourself. You want to protect everyone around you. So make sure your mask fits really well around your nose, really tight, around your cheeks here in your chin area right here. In terms of masks, there's all different types of masks out there with different filtering layers. So you wanna pick um, a mask that filters well. Some of you guys choose to wear cloth masks, which is totally okay. But to make a better filtering material, um, the CDC is recommending that you consider doing double masking. Um, if you have a pleated mask, uh, one of those surgical masks, you can wear that and um, wear your cloth mask over that because your cloth mask will kind of cinch that surgical mask and um, you'll get a better filtration too. Everyone is physically distancing. I like to say physical distancing because, you know, we, it's okay to be social. It's good to be social and socialize, but just keep your physical distance because we know that coronavirus is primarily spread from person to person through droplets. So this is recommended by the CDC. What you do is you can take your surgical mask and if you fold it in half, basically take the loop, you tie a knot on one end of the loop as close as the, close to the mask as possible. Um, and you do it to the other side. And then basically when you put it on, it's gonna allow you to get a better fit around the nose, the cheek, and the chin. So right there. And then it's called knot and tuck because you're gonna tuck the sides like that in. So it's actually better fitting on your cheek, your chin, and over your nose. And for you who wear glasses, it's helpful. You know, a lot of times it fogs up if you put your glasses over the mask bridge, not under, because then it gets condensation. And then we talked about the cloth. What you can do is take the cloth and put it over just like that. So that's a, that's a better way to, if you want to double and, and protect yourself with more layers. So one of the other things you need to do is, like we mentioned, physical distancing. That's going to be really important when you come back to campus, uh, especially during your free periods when you're out eating your lunch and you have your mask off. So speaking of going back to school, I highly, highly recommend this. Bring a personal kit, like a first aid kit. 
um, make sure it has an extra mask, Band-Aids, Kleenex, hand sanitizer, wet wipes, uh, chapstick, and the hygiene pads. And then bring a reusable water bottle because all the water fountains are gonna be taped up. Another reminder is um, we want you to come to school if you're healthy. You know, we're gonna do the daily pass, you're gonna do your COVID testing, the health screening questions, but we wanna make sure that you check yourself, right? If you have a fever of 100 or more, body aches, chills, please stay home, take care of yourself, you know, hydrate, rest. Um, if you have a new cough, that's not associated to like allergies or uh, if you have a history of asthma, um, if it's new and persistent, uncontrolled, difficult to breathe, stay home. Definitely, if you have diarrhea, vomiting, nausea, stay home. Some of those symptoms are the symptoms if you end up catching it or feeling that while at school, unfortunately, we're gonna have to call for your parents to come and pick you up. We need to get to the point of what we called herd or community immunity, which is about 70 to 80% of the public being immune to the coronavirus, either from natural or vaccinated immunity. The more, think of it this way. If you have 10 people in the room or 10, you're hanging out with 10 friends and eight of them are vaccinated or you know, unfortunately had COVID and recovered and they were well, um, there's, they're protecting the two that are hanging out with you. It's less likely for those two of your friends to catch the coronavirus because everyone else is protected. We need 70 to 80% of our of the public to be immune. Now, um, vaccines are pro proven to be safe and effective. Um, they won't make you sick. They don't inject DNA to your body. Um, there's a lot of myths that are going around about the vaccines. When you think about it, I know a lot of people are afraid of vaccines. There's so much information out there, you guys, about uh, how safe and effective these are. Um, trust the science because um, the risk for catching COVID now and the idea of being asymptomatic, having no symptoms, and then bringing that virus home to your parents, to your grandparents, to maybe family members who are um, have a medical condition and they not going to be able to fight the virus as well off as you are. Um, you know, that's something to take into account. Let's do this all together. Um, make sure we take all our COVID prevention um, safety measures and keep your distance and um, we'll get through this together. Thank you, Oliver. Hey, Danielle, um, do you know what the new schedule looks like? I heard about the new schedule for my teachers, but with so many changes, I'm still feeling a bit confused. Yeah, me too. But here is a quick rundown on the new schedule for students who will be learning both at home and on campus. Here are some important updates to share with you regarding our new hybrid learning schedule. We are still in cohorts, cohorts H and L, but we will be attending period F. Our fellow barristers headed to in-person learning will have a slightly different schedule than ours. On Mondays, we'll begin the day with our new Zoom advisory from 8.30 to 9, followed by a 30-minute break before visiting our usual six classes in a row. During your advisory, your fellow barristers at school will be lining up to provide their daily passes and get a health check. We will also have a six minute transition period between our classes as opposed to our normal two minutes. The rest of the week still has the same great taste with a new look. Okay, just slightly later scheduling, but still. Just like on Mondays, after your fortifying advisory Zoom containing all the essential information and socializing a student body needs, you'll have a break from nine to 9.30. Accordingly, the rest of your classes commence 30 minutes later than they used to. We have study time from 12 to 12.40, followed by lunch from 12.40 to 1.20. Your last class starts at 1.20, meaning your day now ends at 2.30. And now for our in-person learners. Here are some mental gymnastics that we know our barristers can handle. As you can see, there appear to be more periods, per se, period D and period G. However, it's just a balancing act to make sure all in-person learners can attend school with their cohort. Cohort H in-person learners will be coming to school on Tuesdays and Thursdays, while Cohort L in-person learners will be coming on Wednesdays and Fridays. This alternating schedule is to ensure equitable learning for both distance and in-person learners. In-person period D Cohort H will be getting in line for a health check before entering school 8.30 to 9 a.m. 
Then, period D cohort H students will go to their in-person classes and experience an in-person advisory from 9 to 9.30 a.m. While period D cohort H is getting their health check, at-home learners of cohorts H and L along with period G cohort L, in-person learners will be attending a Zoom advisory with their teachers 8.30 to 9 a.m. As period D cohort H is attending in-person advisory 9 to 9.30 a.m., at-home learners and period G cohort L will be on break. Like in a relay race, period G cohort L will take on this schedule for Wednesdays and Fridays. Now take a breath with me as period G cohort L is getting their health check, at-home learners of cohorts H and L along with period D cohort H in-person learners will be attending a Zoom advisory with their teachers 8.30 to 9 a.m. While period G cohort L is attending in-person advisory 9 to 9.30 a.m., at-home learners and period D cohort will be on break. Wow, it's gonna take some time to get used to this new schedule. I have to change my alarms now. I don't want to wake up even earlier now. Oh well, it's like I could get much sleep anyway. Now let's take a look at students' perspectives on the COVID-19 vaccine and what made them want to get it. Mostly not getting COVID. I managed to get through the pandemic so far without getting it. And if I could go out and about, go back to normal mostly, that is a plus. I actually got COVID back in January. I heard a lot of people that were like, oh, it's fine, you got it. You're gonna be so more protected from it. I obviously thought, thought that was just nonsense and didn't make sense to me. I got it to not only protect myself, but also my family members. I just felt like it would be a step closer to being able to hang out with my friends and seeing people that I care about. I wanted to protect my family members from getting exposed to COVID through me. I also wanted to feel safe or at the very least protected while going outside or even hanging out with my friends. I also wanted to make sure that if I was exposed at all, that there would be a lot lower chance of me being a risk for those I am close to, as well as just other people who I come across while I'm outside. I really wanted to be a part of the mass vaccination as well. I wanted to do my part to get us one step closer to returning to some semblance of normalcy and togetherness again. The connection that we lost when we stopped doing so many in-person activities, I really wanted to help bring that back safely, of course. Those were some great responses. So did you guys know that we can get our vaccines through LUSD? Yes, but only if you are 16 or older. Here's Danielle with some more information on what you have to do to get your shot. On today's COVID vaccine update, LUSD has recently been opening up vaccination sites to students and families, and April 15th was the first day where anyone 16 years or older could receive the vaccine. Keep in mind that if you are under 18, you may only receive the Pfizer vaccine, which requires two doses that are taken 21 days apart. And after you're vaccinated, you are at risk for minor COVID symptoms, but it will not last past seven days, if any. To set up your appointment on an LUSD-based site, call the Los Angeles Unified Vaccinations Hotline at 213-328-3958 and make sure to bring your white vaccine record card or electronic vaccine record and a photo ID. Long-term care facility residents should also bring their vaccine referral letter as well. The first three vaccination centers for families have already opened at Washington Preparatory, Lincoln High School, and Gage Middle School, and 22 more vaccination centers are expected to open over the next couple of weeks. More sites will continue to be added to serve other communities which lack access to the vaccine as health authorities provide a greater supply of it. With that being said, you do not have to be vaccinated on an LUSD site specifically, but it is always an option that is accessible to students who are 16 or older. Thank you for joining us on this week's episode of Campus News. We hope to see some of you on campus and stay safe, everyone.